guess we'll get started. So hello, uh, welcome to the presentation on Unity's new networking system. It's 10 o'clock, we're going to get started. So uh, my name is Sean Riley. Uh, I work on the networking team for Unity. I work from Florida in the United States, uh, but I travel to Copenhagen to uh, meet up with developers there. And I've been with Unity for about one and a half years. Then before that, I was uh, in the game industry working on game technology, mostly a multiplayer stuff for many years, including places such including uh, Blizzard and uh, EA Origin and NCSoft. So why are we making a new networking system for Unity? Well, <laughs> play games is hard. And uh, here are some of the reasons. So making a high performance transport layer for multiplayer games is a technical challenge. And uh, third party network transports can be difficult to integrate into your game. Then getting players of your multiplayer game to find each other on the internet is difficult without making a common place for them to go. Then uh, getting players to connect to each other over the internet is difficult without having dedicated servers. So the new networking system is uh, designed to provide solutions to these issues. So there's a transport layer. It's a high performance UDP based network transport for Unity multiplayer clients. Then there are low-level and high-level APIs. A low-level API for experienced programmers, network programmers, and an extensible, easy-to-use, high-level API. And the matchmaker it provides room services for games to let players find each other on the internet. And then the relay server lets players communicate which, with each other over the internet. So the status of the new networking system. So the core of the new system is in 5.1. And uh, 5.1 is in public beta right now. So pro users of Unity have access to 5.1 betas. Uh, and that has the core of the networking system in it. So you can try it right now if you're a pro user. The online services portion of the new networking system is not launching with 5.1, but it will launch soon afterwards, either as a, a patch release to 5.1 or with 5.2. And then Unity already has a networking system, so what does this system mean? For the, for the, I'm calling it the legacy network system. This is the system. So that system will continue to exist in Unity in 5.1, but the APIs will be deprecated. And then when once the, the new system is fully launched, including all the online services, then that system will be removed from Unity. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, multiplayer services is a big problem, and we're sort of tackling it in phases. So the first phase we're calling the, the multiplayer foundation, and this is, this is core technology for, for all kinds of multiplayer and network games. But at the beginning, the first phase is most appropriate for peer-to-peer -peer games where one of the peers is the host of the session. Uh, we're going to do more work related to dedicated servers and uh, massively multiplayer-like services. So what does it mean to say peer-to-peer -peer games where one peer is the host? Well, uh, we use the terminology 
in this system of uh, server and host to mean slightly different things. So in most network architectures, you have a, a server and clients. So each game will have one server, and then there'll be multiple clients that will connect to the game. But that's, so that's a simple model when there's a dedicated server. But when there's no dedicated server, uh, one of the clients will take the role of the server. And we call that, that client the host. So that host is running both a server and a client in the same process, where and all the other clients are just clients. Uh, and you can see in this diagram here, <coughs> on the host, we, we call this one the local client. And the ones that are just clients, we call them remote clients, because those are remote from the server. And it, it's a goal of the high-level API to make the code that runs on the the local client and the remote client exactly the same. So you don't have to have lots of checks in your code just to say, where am I running? It's mostly all automatic. So platforms. So the network system is planned to launch on these platforms, Windows, Mac, Android, Linux, iOS, Web Player, Xbox One, and PS4. Um, PS3, I'm not sure. Um, and there's some additional platforms, uh, WebGL and Windows 10 Windows Store apps. Uh, WebGL is a complicated platform for us because it does not natively support UDP networking. So we have to look at um, different strategies on that platform. And Windows Store apps is also complicated because it includes uh, Xbox Live connectivity for talking to Xboxes on the live network. So there's extra work there. Okay, multiplayer system components. So the, the system is built from a series of components that all work together. Um, at the very bottom is the transport layer. I'm going to talk about these in, in more detail. This is just a quick overview. At the bottom is the transport layer. On top of the transport layer, we have uh, engine components, uh, C-sharp based high-level API, and integration with the Unity editor. And then at the very top, the, the online services. is a layer on top of uh, sockets, on top of the operating system socket APIs on each platform. Uh, and it works with arrays of <laughs> But um, in addition to regular UDP, this layer provides some additional functionality. It provides uh, channels with uh, quality of service. So you can have reliable channels, uh, fragmented channels, and th there are many options for the types of channels you can have on the, the transport layer. So this, this API is focused on flexibility and performance. This is an API for experienced network programmers who should be able to do anything with this that they can do with an operating system level socket API and exposes a C-sharp API in a new namespace, Unity Engine Networking Network Transport. So then the next piece <coughs> are engine components. So there's a network identity engine component. Uh, this identifies objects across the network so you can route messages between them sort of similar to the network view in the old system. Then there's a network behavior component. This is a new scripting base class that's derived from mono behavior. And this, it provides a network functionality to user scripts. Then there's a network transform component. 
and this handles uh, synchronization of movement across the network. And then there's a network manager component, and this is a, a higher level object that uh, lets you sort of control the, the game state for a multiplayer game. So then editor integration is the next piece. Um, there are custom inspectors in the editor for each of the new engines. Inspectors. Um, trying to debug and develop uh, real-time multiplayer games uh, can be really hard when you don't know what's going on under the covers. And while you can write logs and do some things to help with that, um, it really helps to be able to see what's going on in real time. So these components give you sort of a view into what's going on in the system. So you can see the, this is a, the network manager component um, that's showing here some of the advanced configuration. So what, while there are APIs to configure your network, uh, much of the configuration is also available through the, the user interface on the network manager. But there are reasonable defaults in most cases, so you only need to tweak these things if you have um, special needs. And then there's integration with the profiler of the editor. So there's two new profiler panels, and we'll look at those later. So then the next piece is the, uh, the high-level network API. C-sharp extension DLL, like the new UI system. And it's got a new namespace, Unity Engine Network. Services for making multiplayer games. So message handling, high performance serialization, uh, distributed object management, state synchronization. And it, it has uh, typical network classes as well. So while the low level API is focused on flexibility and performance, the high-level API is more focused on uh, ease of use and iterative development. So it's sort of, although you can't do everything with the high-level API, it makes it very easy to do a lot of things. So you should be able to rapidly prototype games and rapidly add features to the network-aware games. So high-level API code looks more like game code, and it's really aimed at game programmers, not at network programmers. So then the last So these are services that will be hosted by Unity in the cloud. Uh, there's a relay server uh, allows you to play uh, over the internet without a dedicated server. So this server will route traffic between players and it avoids problems with firewalls and uh, network address translation. Quickly, uh, your best bet is to just use all of
of these pieces because they all work together. And then once you get more familiar with the system and you understand your requirements better, then you can choose to replace layers with your own tech or uh, customize things or optimize things yourself. So I'm just going to list these first and then we'll describe them in more detail. So at the very bottom is uh, the low-level API. Once we get to the high-level API, we first we have messaging and serialization. And that includes the connection class and the writing class. That's the, the network identity and the network behavior. Then we have uh, object lifecycle management, and that's done by the, uh, the scene objects, client scene, network scene. Then we have high level game control, and this is done by the network manager class. And then we have a high level player control and that's done by the network lobby manager class. And then sort of above all of those things are the components that integrate with other features of the Unity engine. <coughs> okay, so low level API, we already talked about this. So this is a new transport layer. So then the first high level API layer we're gonna talk about is messaging and serialization. So there's a network connection class and then reader and writer classes for dealing with byte streams. And so these allow you to read and write uh, C sharp types and all the common unity types to a byte stream then you can send data on a network connection. And there's different levels of data sending. You can send your own arrays of bytes containing anything you want. Uh, you can send uh, a writer object, which is, uh, contains serialized data. Or you can send message objects with a message ID and a message class. Uh, and you can, <coughs> you can derive your own classes from this message base class, and there's uh, a system that co-generates serialization functions for those. So you don't have to write your own serialization code by hand if you don't want to. And then once uh, data is sent across the network, when it's received, uh, you can register handler functions to handle messages on the other side. So then connection management, there's a network client class and a network server class. <coughs> clients connect to servers, servers manage connections from many clients. And these uh, classes provide uh, callbacks for network events, so you get notified when a new client connects to the server or where, when uh, someone gets disconnected or an error occurs on the network. Then the next layer is uh, object state and networked actions. So these classes provide uh, the script API for network game programming. They let you identify objects across the network and they provide uh, ways to synchronize data across the network. So we have uh, sync vars, which automatically synchronize data from the server down to clients. We have sync lists <clears throat> which can synchronize lists of data. And they also allow you to perform uh, networked actions, so remote procedure calls or functions that are called across the network. Um, <clears throat> we, so we call these commands. Commands are sent from the client to the server, and then client RPCs are sent from the server down to client. And these classes uh, expose context to your scripts. So the, the network behavior is a base class, and then it gives you properties on the script that you can access to
to, uh, to understand the context of your object. So is server will be set if you're running on the server or on the host, for example. So then the next layer is uh, object lifecycle management. <coughs> so the system manages the, the lifetime of objects across the network. So when an object is created on the server, an object will be created on the clients that are connected to the server. And if that object gets destroyed on the server, then it will be destroyed automatically on the clients that are connected. Um, <coughs> by default, the remote creation of objects is done via prefabs. So the prefab of the server object, the same prefab will be used to create a client object. But uh, that behavior is customizable. So you can um, implement more advanced uh, object creation schemes like object pool if you want to. And this, this system gives you contextual callbacks on the scripts. So when, a, when an object is created on the client, uh, the on start client callback will be invoked on it. And there are other callbacks, including on start server. Then the next layer is a high level game control. And this is done by the network manager class. Um, and this lets you control the configuration of the game in the network, uh, control of how objects are created and destroyed, and it lets you do synchronized scene changes across the server and all the clients. Uh, it also, <coughs> related to scene changes, it makes sure that if a client joins a game in progress, uh, the client will get put into the, the same scene that the server is running at the time. And the network manager provides a, a simple default user interface for controlling your game. So a button to say, host a new game or join a game. It's not really intended to be a shipping user interface, but it's useful for getting started and for development time. And there's also lots of callbacks in the network manager. Uh, you can derive a class from the network manager and there are many functions, virtual functions such as on server connect, on client connect. So while the, the network manager controls the game state, the network lobby manager controls more the, the players in the game. So this provides a, a network lobby before your main game starts and it has uh, common lobby features like a limit to the number of players and uh, it has a ready state so the game won't start until all the players say they're ready. And you can choose to say players can't join a game in progress if they didn't join when the lobby, when the, w without going through the lobby. <coughs> um, this also supports couch multiplayer. Um, we use this term to describe a situation where you have multiple game controllers hooked up to a console, an Xbox, and you want to play multiplayer with someone else in another room. So you could have two people on one Xbox sitting on a couch and two people on another Xbox sitting on the couch and they could play a four player multiplayer game together. <coughs> in, in that scenario, there's only one network connection, but there are two players and the lobby manager supports that. And the lobby manager is uh, very customizable. Um, it lets you have options in the lobby, so you could, for example, choose what color you're going to be or what character you're going to play. And the lobby manager GUI is a, it's not really a layer here, so I changed the color of that box. Um, so this is a package, uh, an asset package custom asset package that provides a user interface for the lobby. It uses the new UI system. Um, it has support for all different inputs. And this will be available either through the asset store for free or as a standard asset package. 
and uh, comes with all the source code and the prefabs and is completely customizable. So this is a very simple user interface. I think I have a screenshot, no? Okay, there'll be a screenshot later. Um, it's a very simple user interface, but it's designed so that uh, you can use it as a starting point to make a real lobby for your game. And then the last piece is the engine integration. So these are components that add functionality to existing game engine features. So the network transform does a networked movement synchronization. The networked animator can synchronize animations. And there's a network proximity checker, which can control object visibility across the network. <coughs> so th these components um, are built with the, the public APIs of the rest of the layers of the network system. So everything that these components do, you can do in your own code. So again, uh, to get started quickly, um, good to use these components. But if you have uh, advanced requirements or you have a very good understanding of how to optimize your game, you might want to write your own versions of these and use those instead of the built-in components. So the, the network transform component, for example, um, is very generalized. So it can work with different types of physics objects, rigid bodies, 2D rigid bodies, character controllers. Um, if, if you wanted to optimize your network movement in particular, just for your game, you might want to write a customized system for that. But to get started, you just drop a network transform component on your object and you can see them moving around properly. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I'm gonna do a demo of using the lobby manager so there are two sessions for networking at this conference. The, the session after this one is, uh, is also about multiplayer networking. Uh, in that session, I'm, I will also be giving that session. Uh, in that session, it will be a demonstration of building, taking a single player game and making it into a multiplayer game. And the, um, the demo that I'm going to do now uh, actually uses the the multiplayer game that comes out of that other session. So it's a little bit backwards, I'm sorry, but um, that's just how it worked out. So the, the network lobby is pretty easy to add to a game. Uh, and those are the steps. So, and the starting, the starting point we have here is we have a very simple multiplayer game with no lobby, just a single scene, right? <coughs> so to add the network lobby, we create a new scene, then we import the, uh, the package, which contains all the lobby assets. Then uh, we're, we're gonna drag the prefab, the lobby manager prefab into the new scene and configure it a little bit and then that's about it. It will work then. So that's, uh, that's what the multiplayer lobby package looks like. Uh, you can see inside it there are prefabs here. Then there are some user interface canvas prefabs. Then down here are some scripts for controlling the lobby and some user interface canvas scripts. So you can see you get all the source code to the scripts in the lobby and all the prefabs, so you can customize them. And once the lobby is in the scene, you get a custom inspector. That's what the, the lobby looks like. Some of these things <coughs> are from the network manager. So the, the network lobby manager is actually derived from network manager. And the the GUI lobby manager is actually derived from uh, 
network lobby manager. So the same, many of these things here are from the base classes. But then there are some things specific to the lobby manager. So we have to tell it what the lobby scene is. So we drag a scene object into that slot. And then we tell it what the, the gameplay scene is. So this is the, the scene where your game actually